Ashish. Oh, thank you so much for being here today with us. Hi, Delia. Thanks for hosting me. Oh my gosh. So I gave you a little bit of an intro, but please um, say hi to everyone. Introduce yourself. Hi, everyone. I'm Ashish. I'm a senior applied scientist in Amazon SageMaker, particularly uh, Jumpstart and built-in algorithms. Oh, Ashish, thanks so much. So we just went through a specific part of the training process, um, automatic model tuning. Um, but now if maybe you can kind of shift it to how does this actually relate to image classification differences? Uh, maybe you can explain it. <laughs> sure. So uh, what Pradeep explained is automatic model tuning. So you need a model. So that's where <laughs> flow image classification comes in. What will you tune? So you need to tune a model for a particular use case. So we are going to talk about one use case called image classification, where you have a bunch of images and you want to classify them as, let's say, cat and dog, or maybe two different types of flowers, or for a product business case, whether the product is defective or the product is working. So from a manufacturing images, or maybe a customer just wants to try whether a particular fried chicken is good or bad from its image. So all particular use case, all use cases can happen. So this is where TensorFlow image classification comes. It's an image classification algorithm. It is based on TensorFlow. And you start with a pre-trained model available in TensorFlow Hub because the research community has created many pre-trained models. And these pre-trained models help you create a model even with a very small data set. So let's say you have only 100 images or thousands of images, not, but not millions of images. Then you want to train a classifier, which can do a good prediction. So that's where TensorFlow image classification comes. And we provide it in a one-click experience. You can come to SageMaker Jumpstart Studio. And with a one-click, you can upload your data. And you can train your model using AMT and then deploy the model. Awesome. So that remind, always reminds me of, I think I saw it on Twitter some time ago when some of the machine learning was like, hot dog, not hot dog. <laughs> it makes those all very much, like, so much easier. Um, oh, name that reference, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, can, so I, for you know, people that you know, maybe haven't used TensorFlow image uh, you know, before, can you talk a little bit about how customers are using it today with SageMaker? So uh, with SageMaker, all you need to do is bring your own data. Or if you want to do a classification on the standard classes, let's say particular types of cats and dogs. So we have pre-trained models. And what the research community does, it creates pre-trained model using standard data sets. One of the data sets is ImageNet, which has thousand classes, many of the types of cats and dogs and many other standard items, household items. So it can detect one of those images. In that case, you don't need to train the model. It is a pre-trained model. You just deploy it and then send an image to the uh, hosting instance, and it will return back you the probability that which class does it belong to, whether it is a dog or a cat or which type of dog or which type of cat or many other labels. But let's say you have a business use case, which is like detecting whether it's a good fried chicken or not. Then you need to have some data set which says that, okay, this is an image of a good product. This is an image of a bad product, let's say. And then you have certain images, let's say thousands or hundreds of for both the classes. Then you upload these images to an S3 bucket and you click a button on jumpstart <coughs> where and select one of the models. There are many pre-trained models. So you select one of the models based on your use case. If you have a really complex data set with many classes, then you need a bigger model versus if you have a simpler use case, you may need a smaller model and then select one of the models and <laughs> hit on the train button. So now the model is going to fine tune itself on your data set, such that when you deploy it, it can predict whether it's a good fried chicken or a bad fried chicken. So that's how you work with it. And once the training is done, you hit on the deploy button, the model is ready for running inference. And next time you send it images, it will return you back the class table that what is the probability that it's a good one or it is a bad one and so on and so forth for many other classes, whatever you have. And you can do AMT, automatic model tuning. If you have a complex data set, you really need <coughs> to fine tune. Like we are talking about taking a pre-trained model and fine tuning it for your own business case. So when you are tuning the model, it has parameters which need to change their values. So changing the value requires an algorithm and those algorithms have many hyperparameters which algorithm you want to use. And even when you're using an algorithm, there is standard terms like learning rate, batch size, and many others. 
data augmentation? Do you want to use a standard state-of-the-art technology, <coughs> machine learning algorithms, so that your model tuning is better and better? So you can select the different values for any of these hyperparameters, or you can use the AMT service, which will do it for you, such that your model is a higher quality model. It has it gives higher accuracy for prediction. Yeah, Ashish, there is, it sounds like a lot that SageMaker jumpstart, and especially for this use case for TensorFlow image classification, that's like taken care of for you. It takes so much of the work out of it. And I think maybe to help like wrap everyone's head around like, the power of how jumpstart with used with TensorFlow image classification like work together. Um, I think it'd be awesome if you could show us a demo of it. Sure, let's see a demo. All right, we always like demos. Yeah. Right. So here it is a uh, the screen of SageMaker jumpstart, and SageMaker jumpstart does not only provide TensorFlow image classification; it provides many machine learning algorithms and many business use case solution templates, which can do the entire end-to-end -end job for you with your own data set and with the default data set that we have already inputted there. So you have fraud detection in financial transactions. You want to identify the frauds, fraud detections, you use one of these samples, co corporate credit rating, financial payment classification, and many others. And similarly, we have these <coughs> problem type specific models where you are just going to train a model and deploy it and then use it in your bigger journey of machine learning for your product, for your business case, which can be image classification where you have an image and you want to classify it. It may be object detection. You have an image and you want a bounding box around where is the person in this image or where is the actually a fried chicken in this image. So you want a bounding box around it. So you use object detection. You may want to use semantic segmentation. You want the pixels of the image to be <coughs> identified corresponding to the particular class label. You have instance segmentation. And not only these, you have beyond vision models, you have text models. You want to do a text classification, whether it is a good movie review or is it a negative mo movie review. You have question answering, you input a paragraph and you ask a question, then the model will return. Where is the answer in that inputted paragraph? <laughs> So, yeah, Ashish, while you're here, we actually got a good question. Um, this is from Raj Clicks. Um, so can SageMaker jumpstart document do document classification and reading? Uh, it can do document classification through, we have a solution, I believe, on document classification. So let me just check it. OK. Um, and then we can always just like to it. Um, uh, Raj clicks. Thanks for the question. Um, if you, anyone else well, has more it questions, is, please. it is going to come soon. We will be adding a solution for document classification. Awesome. Uh, otherwise, you can use it using text classification if your documents are essentially small paragraphs. Fantastic. Or it will be added soon. So keep tuned in with Jumpstart. We will have all your business problems solved through different models. Okay, so let me go back. So text text models, we have text classification, question answering, sentence pair classification, named entity recognition, where you want to identify in a sentence, what is a, where is the name of a city and what's the name of a person. You can use text generation that you input one line and the model will predict the next line for you. But for this demo, let me go deeper into image classification. So for image classification, we have many models. Uh, from TensorFlow Hub, from PyTorch Hub, but let's start with one particular image classification model from TensorFlow Hub. So when you click on a model card, we call it model card, you see that you can directly deploy the model, okay, for which you don't have to do, bring any data. Don't have to do can... anything. Any, that, did I just hear some, say something like that? I mean, <laughs> anything that's simple is like, wow. <laughs> Let me just click the deploy button actually. It will. Wow. It is deploying the model on a SageMaker instance where everything we have put for you is a default value, but you can change it. You can choose which SageMaker instance do you want to deploy your model on, what is the endpoint name, and if there are other customer resource tags and whatnot. That's one use case. The other is that you want to actually fine tune the model first on your own data set. And for that, we provide a bunch of tuning parameters, which we, you can fine tune, which you can <coughs> tune using AMT. So how many epochs do you want to train, fine tune this model on the data set that you have provided? You can upload your data set using an S3 bucket, or you can use the default data set that we have provided just so that you can get the experience. 
then like epochs there is batch size which optimizer do you want to use what is the learning rate what is the learning rate different hyperparameters of these optimizers and <laughs> do you want to do early stopping and do you want to do data augmentation and so on so these are many hyperparameters playing with them or setting them using amt you can tune your model to give the best accuracy so, so, so you could use a fried chicken model, and then I had my own waffle model that I could bring into this, and then figure out what the best image was for chicken and waffles. Uh, <laughs> you can bring in your model from outside. You can pull a model to predict your best waffle or not using this algorithm. So you need to bring in some images, and you can fine tune this model. Amazing. That's amazing. So you know you're you're an applied scientist, uh, and I noticed that in, in in your name, and I and I definitely am not. So I'll be honest, data does scare me because I I you know I don't know that I am able to read it as I should. Uh, so what 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 advice would you have for someone like me that was just getting started uh, with machine learning? So for starting with machine learning, either you know you definitely know your business use case, or you identify the core problem. Like, is your problem involving image classification or text classification or object detection? Or if you don't know that much, then you know that, okay, do you want to do fraud detection or corporate credit rating prediction? So as long as you know any of these details, then that's it. You come to Jumpstart, you can find a model for your particular business case. And just by uploading your data, you can train the model on your own data set and then deploy the trained model. And then, of course, you need to integrate all these things to make work for your bus particular business use case. Like if you have a downstream application of getting that those predictions and transforming them into some meaningful actions. Yeah, and, and then I guess that the output of this is, uh, is it a REST API? No, I'm going to show you output. So what oh, I did by talk, giving the, talking to you is that I click on the deploy button and the train button. So the model is getting deployed and the model is getting trained on the default data set, okay? So for the purpose of demo, I have already deployed the model and have the model running. So once you have the model deployed, let's say this is a deployed model. Once you the model gets deployed, it will open up a page like this where you will have a link to a notebook, okay? And this notebook, let me see, this notebook is already open. So this notebook has the entire demonstration how to use the deployed model. So let me run it. And it has an image of a dog and a cat that I downloaded from an S3 bucket. And now I'm going to send these images to my endpoint for running inference. And let's see what does the model predict. So model predicted that this is an Egyptian cat and this is a bull mastiff dog. This is the top level prediction. And you can run the model to get the all the top five predictions, that's what you get here. I, I, I sorry, I, I love it, and I also just love the pictures. Of, I of was the focused on the, the pictures dog. too. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> as you're talking, I was like, those are really cute. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I'm sure there are a lot of people who just like well, every best way to get learn about anything is really to get uh, hands on with it. Um, so really, where's the best place that people should go to um, get started to uh, apply TensorFlow machine image classification? So uh, you come to SageMaker Studio, and when you come to SageMaker Studio, we have these different uh, machine learning tools, including Jumpstart, Autopilot, and Data Wrangler, and many others. So in this Jumpstart, you click here, and then you can browse all these models. And before you hit on the Deploy and Train button, you can read through the entire description that what is the kind of input this model will take and what is the kind of output you expect. So this tells you whether you want to use this model. Does it work for your use case or not? And if you want to fine tune, then how do you need to prepare your data set? It gives you all these descriptions. <laughs> And using this, you can understand whether it works for your use case or not. And if you want to use it in an API, then we have provided you a notebook such that you can use SageMaker Python SDK and do the same operations of the train and deploy button through a piece of code. Ashish, this is fantastic. Um, I love the questions I saw that people were coming in with. Um, we also have a survey. Um, we read them. Uh, and we definitely want to hear your feedback. What are some things that you want to hear from us on? Um, so please take a moment to fill out the survey. Um, Ashish, thank you so much for sharing this 
demo with us of TensorFlow image classification. It's Thank definitely you. Definitely been amazing. Now I want fried chicken for lunch. I know. So, I'm, you know. <laughs> I'm not even a fried chicken person, but you made me want it now. <laughs> Oh, thank you so much. Um, thank you.